The biggest shock for me about Bags of Hope is that it was never a thought or a plan. John and I met, I want to say we were in junior high. We, oddly enough, as teenagers, wanted to have six kids, both of us, and always felt like we wanted to adopt as well, not realizing that after one child, we'd be adopting five. When we got the call for Shane, the foster mom says, oh wait, he has one more bag. She comes up from the basement, opens the door, and she's carrying the black trash bag. Every time he had to move, the social workers would come in, and they would take his stuff and put it in a black trash bag. Families don't have luggage. And when a foster family has just gotten so burnt out that they can't take it anymore, they haven't bought the kids luggage. Trash bags are the one thing almost every home has. Your teddy bear or your blanket or your journal or whatever connects you to the people that you love. There's a million stories of this kid's trash bag got thrown out or this little girl's trash bag was misplaced. You know, and I'm thinking of like my own kids. I think we just knew we had to do something, but that something truly was, we thought, a small little Christmas project. <laughs> Maybe we'll do this for the families that we know. 25 like quickly grew to 100. And so that Christmas, that was the first one that we did. It was 100 bags. We've done it for seven years now, and this past Christmas we did 6,000. <laughs> Even if I handed you the list of all the names of all the children that were in the state of Rhode Island or Massachusetts in foster care, it's still not the same as seeing a bag for every child with their name on it piled in one huge room. Those bags become faces, and each bag has a story. We've seen over 70 kids fostered, and I think right now it's around 15 children adopted into families that got licensed to adopt because of Bags of Hope. The state is coming to us and they're like, how do you do it? Like, how do you recruit so many families? And we're like, it's the church to take care of the widow and the orphan. You know, it's our job to do that. And there's this like renewed sense of ownership to that and like an awakening to um, the need to care for these children and that the church has kind of dropped the ball a long time ago on. Most of the kids that are in foster care don't have their name on anything, and most of their names are really unique. Not all, but there's a lot of unique names. Seeing firsthand the response of kids and how excited they get that something is personal, this is just for you. For people to want to do something for the kids that I care about, that was kind of how I really connected with Bags of Hope. I didn't get into foster care with the intent to adopt. I just wanted to mother. I'm taking care of God's children. And the next child that came was Avia. One of the things that I love about Bags of Hope for Avia is there's nothing really unusual about being adopted when there are a whole bunch of kids in your community that are adopted. You're not the one kid in the entire church that isn't with your biological parents. When so many families foster, you may not even know who they are. I'm not sure that Grace realizes that our family dynamic is maybe not normal. <laughs> I think she may think that most people adopt or foster. Grace is a lot like John, the more the merrier. Not everybody can foster but everybody can have a role. You know, God is a father, you know, and even when we're like going through our stuff or even forsaking him, he still hasn't forsaken us. And I feel like it's an honor to be able to try to reflect that to children that may have felt forsaken. To be able to then say, no, this is who you are and I love you.